Jeremy Johnson bribes. Bringing Harry Reid's numerous bribes to justice has proved difficult because of multiple layers of cover-up, fearful witnesses, and the passage of time. However, in early 2010 in Utah, convicted internet marketing fraudster Jeremy Johnson claims to have paid large sums of money in a failed bid to get Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to quash a Federal Trade Commission investigation into F Johnson's fraudulent dealings. Johnson's claims are credible enough to lead to indictments. According to the FTC's complaint, quote, Jeremy Johnson and friends operate a far-reaching internet enterprise that deceptively enrolls unwitting cons consumers into memberships for products or services and then repeatedly charges their credit cards or debit funds from their checking accounts without consumers' knowledge or authorization for memberships that consumers never agreed to accept. This scam has caused hundreds of thousands of consumers to seek chargeback reversals of charges to their credit cards or debits to their bank accounts." Unquote. Typical of Johnson's company, iWorks products were ones that purported to show consumers how to make money online using Google AdWords. Eventually, the FTC brought charges that threatened to bring down Johnson's cash machine, a scam so large he was laundering money with trips to Las Vegas and the Wynn Casino. Since Johnson's indictment, court-appointed receivers confirmed the existence of Johnson's precious metal safe. According to the 2011 reports of the Rob Evans receiver firm, Johnson owned a detached garage that held safes with guns, jewelry, and precious metals. According to an email Johnson sent to one of the receivers on January 26, 2011, the inventory of one safe included two gold nuggets, 32,000 silver quarters, 20 gold coins, and 160 pounds of miscellaneous rare coins. The key to understanding Johnson's involvement in multiple levels of bribery is that iWorks and its many subsidiaries had created an infrastructure of credit processing vehicles. That led Johnson to be a player both with payday loan impresario Richard Rawl of Czech City, as well as the infant online poker ventures of Full Tilt Poker and Poker Stars. According to a recording Johnson made of a meeting with then Utah Chief Deputy Attorney General John Swallow, Johnson believed Reed was amenable to monetary persuasion because Johnson was told someone at Full Tilt Poker paid Reed $1 million to change his stance on federal online poker legislation. Johnson, whose elite debit firm processed online poker transactions through Utah's Sun First Bank, claims he was told by someone associated with Full Tilt Poker that Reed had done an about face on the poker issue because Reed got a little something in his retirement fund. Unquote. Johnson claimed he was asked to withdraw $1 million from first Sun First Poker Funds via, via an untraceable $1 million check to be, quote, sent to some entity, unquote. Ironically, Reed's office called the allegations, quote, absurd and utterly false, unquote, and said the senator, quote, will not have his integrity questioned by a man of Johnson's low record and character. Johnson responded with a hyperbolic statement reminding Reed that, Quote, he lives in a glass house that is filled with shady real estate deals, secret meetings, and questionable fundraisers. He should be careful where he throws rocks, unquote. Even more interesting is the surfacing of a $2 million canceled check that apparently made its way through a Swiss bank account to Harry Reid's Searchlight Fund. A hard-hitting series by Tom Harvey and Jennifer Dobner in the August 3, 2017 Salt Lake City Tribune goes into the sordid details. Quote, the $2 million cashier's check was drawn at a St. George Bank November 5, 2010. From there, it was sent by FedEx to a Los Angeles attorney who represented Ireland-based Full Tilt Poker. Made out to, quote, Mail Media LTD, unquote, a Full Tilt-owned entity used to launder online gambling funds, the millions then were deposited at Basler Canton no, Bank in Switzerland, where Mail Media had an account. Tying everything together was the late Richard Rawl, a Provo, Utah millionaire who built an empire of Czech City payday loan locations, including more than 30 in Nevada. Rawl was deeply involved in a federal lobbying campaign on behalf of the broader check cashing industry through Community Financial Services Association. Rawl told Johnson he could use his clout with Reed to help end a Federal Trade Commission investigation into iWorks, Johnson's company, for $600,000. Rawl and Swallow, his former employee, claimed the Johnson affair was a standard lobbying effort. But there have been many lobbying efforts involving Reed that all stink of kickbacks. 
Before Rawl died of cancer, he signed an affidavit saying the money was for lobbying and that he kept $50,000 as a fee, 23500 of which was to pay Swallow for his help on a proposed Nevada cement plant. Rawl spent $100,000, split evenly between two lobbyists, J. A. Brown, a close friend of Reed, and Tim Rupley, a longtime co lobbyist for the Payday Lending Trade Group. The group gave Brown a similar contract worth $240,000 annually in 2011. Reed's spokeswoman, Kristen Orthman, repeatedly stated Reed was not involved. Quote, the allegations of bribery by Mr. Johnson, a man with a background of fraud, deception, and corruption, are absurd and utterly false, unquote. However, from OpenSecrets.com, we find the portion of Community Financial Services Association expenditures devoted to Jay Brown were... $240,000 in 2011, $240,000 in 2012, and $140,000 in 2013 for a total of $620,000. Given Jay Brown has no special expertise in check cashing other than by being bagman consigliere to Harry Reid, apparently he was leveraging his connections to Senator Reid to shake what turned out to be $620,000 in lobbying fees out of Community Financial. Not so coincidentally, the $600,000 Jeremy Johnson claims he was asked for to bribe Reed is about what Jay Brown was paid as a lobbyist for Community Financial. The check cashing industry is reminiscent of the old mob loan sharking business, so we are unsurprised that Jay Brown would end up in the middle of accusations by Jeremy Johnson. The entire web of Jeremy Johnson, Jay Brown, Harry Reed, and a number of other Utah politicians on the take is still evolving and extends far beyond what we've presented. However, what is clear is that Harry Reid has a consistent history of being the nodal point in bribery and influence peddling. 